No, I think, look, the, the M&A that we are seeing, and as, as you said, you know, certainly increased momentum in, in a lot of the transactions that we are you know, seeing. We see it from the angle specifically of emerging markets, as you know, you know with, the, with, the, with the presence we have in Africa. And we've certainly seen a much more interest into cross-border deals from investors uh, in the region, from the big sovereign wealth funds, but also the, the smaller family offices. So it's a two-tier market that we're seeing. You know, the big deals uh, around the mineral uh, mining and, and, and metals, around oil and gas, around power infrastructure that's much needed in parts of Africa, but also a second tier of smaller uh, players who want to go and you know get exposure to some of the growth stories in Africa. I mean, as you know, you know, six out of ten. Uh, fastest growing economies are now uh, on the African continent. So there are tremendous opportunities. And the past 12 months we have seen you know, massive uh, pickup in, in the business that we're, we're handling out of, out of here. And I think this falls in line as well with the overall pickup in, in M&A. Uh, but we specifically target, as you know, cross-border into, into Africa. Uh, that seems to be picking up quite nicely. Because I think there's been a, a, you know, a couple of factors. I think there's been frustration, an increasing frustration with the situation in Europe, with things not getting uh, resolved. I think we have a lot of investors in the region here that got uh, you know, moderately or, or massively burned in uh, you know, some, some of the G7 countries, um, in Europe in particular. So they're looking for you know, diversification of, of their investments for a different kind of asset allocation. And the benefit always goes to emerging markets in, you know, when this happens. And I see this as a trend that started uh, and that will continue. Uh, the other theme I think that's interesting that was a bit disappointing is there were a lot of hope last year with respect to the Arab Spring and what it would bring on. And I think it kind of fell short of, of expectations. Uh, we feel that North Africa uh, in particular is still overall you know not stable enough to be conducive to regular uh, MA flows but uh, we see this changing you know hopefully uh, as the political situation stabilizes uh, stabilizes a bit more well it's really a big big difference you know uh, as, as as we know emerging markets investments is about being on the ground you know you cannot do remote control investing in a lot of the countries that we deal with and uh, Africa in particular, we are in you know, uh, 19 sub-Saharan uh, uh, countries. So we have significant presence in all these countries and can therefore provide uh, on the ground advice with respect to transactions, deals, but also partnerships. You know, who are suitable partners for whatever business our investors want to go in whether it's on the resources side with the mining and oil and gas or power infrastructure or even telecom or even retail which is a you know an increasing uh, uh, you know increasingly busy uh, sector you know as the wealth gets created in Africa then the retail and the consumer sector also uh, seeing you know uh, a lot of a lot of activity there uh, so it, it is quite important to be on the ground definitely and this is a main calling card for us